I'm just gonna start recording. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am not sure what the movie is about. It's about a young girl. Um, she goes on a wonderful Wonderland adventure where she meets a, a cute boy dragon, uh, a friendly but gruff uh, at first uh, Spider Man. Man spider. spider. Yeah, he's got this is like a spider, the guy that works the boiler. With the big mustache. Yeah. This is for people who have seen it, so they, they know. I'm not really sure what the movie is about. I know that I liked it. Yeah. I liked the movie. I was a little bit frustrated. Yeah. I was frustrated in the beginning. Yeah. Because yeah. I felt the parents were incredibly Yeah. That, that, that was I felt That was probably the weakest part is just kind of how they set up. They're probably like Okay, we have this amazingly creative and original idea for like a kid's fairy tale thing. How do we just get her into the fairy tale world? Uh, the, the parents almost like by like a trance are just way too curious and they're like, oh, let's just go on this detour when really we should try to figure out how to get to the house we're moving to. And they just, you know, they kind of keep going and then the kid's like, there's something off here, but the parents don't pick up on it. That's probably the most kind of, you know, forced thing in the movie. Once you get past that, then uh, yeah, I think it's... Uh, you, you just end up really uh, love all the characters. I like that one really big spirit, with the, like almost with a big mustache, kind of walrus tusks. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just a lot of great creatures and spirits, and uh, there's there's um, there's definitely themes of gluttony and greed in the movie. Where yeah, because with even the, when they... the the no face, once it starts to just devour the people working there, but still offers all the gold. And for a while, the the workers are okay with still feeding the the monster because they're like, well, it's just passing out so much gold like you know this is kind of messed up and this could destroy us in the end but look how rich it could possibly make us right so there's things like that yeah it's hard for me to say what the movie was about i think there were there were there were all kinds of like i think there was for the baby that was the the son the giant baby the son of the the the, the grandmother granny that ran the bathhouse you know she is overprotecting him she's keeping him in this germ-free zone under all the, the blankets and then eventually, when he gets transformed by the sister of the granny, and then eventually, actually, oh, first is always just carried around by the, the fly, but then at one point actually doesn't want to get carried and wants to go on its own, and then at the end of the movie, stands up to the grandmother after he's kind of experienced and, yeah. an adventure, went outside, oh, it's actually, it's okay, like, I don't need to be cooped up all the time, I can actually take care of myself and get out there and, you know, get that confidence, things like that. Her relationship with No Face is mm. i i don't know i feel like mm. <laughs> mm. you're i'm mm. losing my train of thought now um mm. i feel like the relationship with no face was interesting no face himself was interesting looking at how he interacted with everybody else versus how he mm -hmm. interacted with chihiro mm. he <sighs> obviously he wanted love he wanted companionship and he wasn't getting that. So he thought, well, if I give people stuff, then they're going to give mm -hmm. me all of that. All mm -hmm. of that. And so he thought, in order for me to get affection and love from people, I have to give, yeah. uh, I, get, I have to give them stuff. Yeah. And I so, have. yeah. And I that's how people, yeah. everybody else responded positively yeah. to that. Yeah. It was working with everyone yeah. else. But it also wasn't making no face happy. It was it eating, still eating, but it's none of this is working. I'm giving yeah. these things to people. They're giving me stuff back, but none of it is actually satisfying me. Yeah. So I think that speaks to transactional relationships, yeah. right? Where you, the relationship is just based on what am I getting from yeah. you? What am yeah. I giving you? So yeah. if I give you something, you have to give me something yeah. back, which is awful. Yeah. And then trauma and, and numbing yourself. Yeah. Instead like of and, actually dealing with it or finding yeah. connection. Yeah, like, let me finish my train so, of thought. I'll so. forget. People who go into transactional relationships, because they don't know how else to show love than to give people objects, if people don't receive those objects, then they feel like, mm -hmm. well, you know, I'm not good enough. They feel things like that. But then they feel frustrated because then they they don't know how else to show love. They don't know how to show love in a healthier way. And so they get frustrated because, well, if I don't, give you this thing, then you're not going to then be indebted to me for giving you this thing. I want you to be indebted to me so you can come back and give me the love that I want. You know, that's what I think maybe two, what's his yeah. name? Two face? Yeah, uh, no face. No face gets yeah. back. Yeah. Um, but once befriends Chihiro as just a genuine friendship, can go back into a, a peaceful, normal form. 
Yeah. And uh, and, and it's genuine because yeah. Chihiro befriends him yeah. without asking for any kind yeah. of material objects. Yeah. She accepts him as he is without asking for anything. Mm-hmm. And when you get that, that is really great. Mm-hmm. When you're someone who's looking for affection, when you get that from someone, you start feeling like, oh, I'm good enough as I am. I don't have to draw people into my life mm-hmm. um, or into having a relationship with me by giving them material material stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm enough on my own. The thing about um, the grandmother, you know, she gets people to sign a contract where she basically indentured servitude and then she owns their name, which is, I think, kind of a symbolism of just, like, part of the indentured servitude. You start to lose sense of your identity because you are just a cog. Exactly. Or you're just part of her property or something. And by sh- controlling people, by having their names, then once she's able to help the her dragon friend, <laughs> dragon boyfriend, Haku, uh, find his name, and then when she remembers her name, then it's, it's them trying to hold on to a piece of their self-worth and identity. Yeah, that's actually so interesting, honestly, mm-hmm. because, I don't know... The world system is like that, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't it? At the end it of the is. day, mm-hmm. you have to pander to a certain dogma in order for you to survive it. And that's what people do. So then you chip away at yourself little mm-hmm. by little. You get into this kind of job and you hate certain things about it, but mm-hmm. you then just forget those. You leave, you check those at the door in order for you to survive the day. Mm-hmm. And you do that every single day. You start to forget about yourself. And maybe the job is taxing and you're working like 12 hour days and mm-hmm. you don't have time for yourself anymore. So you're kind of forgetting who you are. So that's where maybe the taking your name taking yeah. she takes your name yeah. maybe that's what it is it's the, it's the whole do you remember who you were before the world told you told you who you who we, were yeah, yeah yeah i figured we'd get to it we got it we just gotta talk about it a little bit <laughs> it brings out, out oh stuff. my god yeah. this is much deeper than i than yeah, i thought i feel like I'm, i need to it's a good movie. yeah but um yeah it's kind of it's really yeah yeah yeah, yeah i i do i liked chihiro mm-hmm. i think Why she's very important is that she's a reminder of when you were growing up and Mm -hmm. when you were untouched Mm -hmm. by the world, right? Which is great, right? But, like, for me, um, the main thing is that because she's she's, she's a kid and so she hasn't participated in the system as much. And so she's not destroyed by it. Mm -hmm. So she still has that sense of self, which human beings have and that... You know, she's more, she's still much more optimistic mm-hmm. about life. And she also is still more sensitive to, mm-hmm. like, if there's something wrong, you know, yeah. how kids are, yeah. or animals, how they can sense that something is yeah. off. Kids are like that because yeah. they haven't pushed themselves aside. They haven't mm-hmm. pushed their instinct aside. They still very much have it. With her, we get to see how children operate in a, and in a, a negative environment mm-hmm. versus people who are have already integrated or assimilated mm-hmm. in that negative environment. Yeah. The people who have assimilated don't really see the mm-hmm. issues and they yeah. participate in that negativity yeah. and they become part of it. Even mm-hmm. if they think that they aren't, yeah. they become part of that. But then if you are someone who hasn't been, who still has your, your fullness, mm-hmm. um, you are and haven't been affected by this environment, you watch people, you can see people, mm-hmm. like you are yeah. definitely an outsider looking yeah. in. And so you are more aware of the issues in there. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like with her, that's why she's able to, all of the stuff that's happening, mm-hmm. she's much better at saying no to things mm-hmm. or navigating that space in a way that's more profitable or lucrative for her and other people around her versus the people that are blinded by the system because they've they've had their names taken away. Mm-hmm. And say so, so they don't, have the capacity anymore to change the system for Mm -hmm. the better you know she's willing to see through just the the stink creatures uh spirits issues because she still has this okay well let's try and understand why this you know the spirit is acting the way it is so she's got that that innocence and that trust for every single person that she approaches she's not jaded by these you know uh these these learned behaviors and these these stereotypes and these these past experiences that affect how she reacts to things the the guy in the boiler room um when she she just falls asleep there she's actually more comfortable there than where she's designated to sleep um and then so that kind of when he he sees her asleep there um he puts a blanket on her which is a really sweet moment and then kind of breaks him out of his routine 
And then, yeah, it's, it's just a, a nice moment for both of them. The relationship between Chihiro and Haku. Yeah. That was a very beautiful relationship. It was. It was. Yeah. Yeah. That was really beautiful. She feels like she knows Haku, but mm-hmm. doesn't know from where. Yeah. And so they both remembered uh, yeah. each other or yeah. the other from a time that yeah. they couldn't recollect. Yeah. And so then later she remembers and and she's like, hey, you know, when I was a kid, this and this happened. Yeah. And it was a river. It was a river. What? And he yeah. and she names the full, um, the name of the of yeah. the river. And he remembers that. Oh, that was my. That's my name. Yeah. You know, he remembers his name, which mm-hmm. is the whole thing, and he mm-hmm. gets his agency back from yeah. Yubaba, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was a really, really nice, a very beautiful relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was so sweet. So was and really... I liked that he was a river. Yeah. And it wasn't anything romantic or anything yeah. like that. But it was just that they had an experience together. and Yeah. 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 I mean, he saved, he saved her. Yeah. And he remembers that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very nice movie. Mm-hmm. It, was a, it was a very... It was a beautiful movie. Yeah. I feel the like music I, was great. There's the that one so piano good. theme that I really liked. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like there's probably much more. I'm going to think about this movie much later. But that's it, right? Yeah, that's it. Completely. That's our take on Spirited Away. I give it like, I mean, it's up there with the best. So I oh, could yeah. give it a 10. I give it a 10 out of yeah. 10. I yeah. definitely do. Yeah. I... It, it strikes like the, there's some great voice acting in it. Um, whether it's like the dancing frog, all the, the frogs were great, all the spirits sa- sounded really cool or everything, and then, you know, the main characters. So, yeah, just, the music was great, the animation was really cool. I definitely, this was a good review for me, because when I started the review, I was not here. I was like on the phone. <laughs> now, as we talked about it, I'm like, actually, yeah. yeah. Beautiful movie. 10 yeah. out of 10. Yeah. All right, well, what did you guys think of Spirit of the Way? Well, Let us know. Yeah, do you revere it? I revere it. Yeah, it's just one of those. Got to see it. At least yeah, once. it was great. Yeah. Goodbye. Things will be popping up. <laughs>